Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mary Moses. You are in the forest part of Forest Fairy. We explore the deep, deep depths of our heart and we leave behind the mind. What does the mind know anyway? Um, it knows A, B, C, one, two, three. It knows many things, right? But the heart is 5,000 times stronger than the brain. So here, we love your opinions. We love your energy. We love your vibes. We love your heart. But if, if the brain gets too strong, where if I become a jerk and say, I know this for 100% fact and my ego gets too strong, then that's not the intention here. The intention in this room is to allow authenticity and the heart to, to speak and the voice of God to speak, the voice of energy and frequency, the sun and the moon, the water and the fire to speak through us, to ignite us and to shift us to a better place to usher in heaven on earth and to become collective consciousness where you and me become best friends and we have fun and we um, can become a child and we can be silly, we could be wrong, we could be stupid, we could be um, whatever we want to be um, and love it. That's that's the energy that I hope to invoke in this reading today. So my name is Mary Moses. I've been reading on TikTok for over four years an ancient art technique called scrying. Scrying is the origin of, of script. God speaks through telepathy. And telepathy is like a telepathic vision. So we are actually creating a television. And this is paper. It's a dead tree. This is charcoal. It's a burned tree. And we create a chaotic mess. And then out of that mess comes the voice of God. And believe me, if you've seen me go live before, some miraculous things have occurred in our lives. One time, somebody asked me, Haha, why don't you connect to a cloud or a rainbow? And I was like, okay, why don't we just do that just for fun? So we started saying, okay, let's connect to a rainbow. Isn't that so silly? A rainbow can't have a consciousness. It's invisible. Well, anyway, so I was like, let's just do it. So we covered the piece of paper and this light shone across the paper with a rainbow on the paper with this goddess face. And we all started crying. So think not that the invisible world is dead and silent. No, no. If you want to awaken your heart and hear the voice of spirit, angels, your double self, your spirit guides, I encourage you to become a scryer. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what you're going to see. Deceased loved ones come forward. Your ancient blueprint of your soul comes forward. Truths of your past come forward. It's like, what? So today we are connecting with Veronica. What I love about Veronica is she has the spirit of a child. She has that authentic spirit that I know for a fact that if we were to get together, we would play even as adults and just have fun. Um, and we wouldn't want to be an adult. We would be like uncomfortable in each other's presence. We would only be comfortable if we were playing something childlike. So I pulled three cards for you. One is pleasure. I think it's time to take things easy. Go with the flow and rest and know that everything happens in divine timing. Only thing that we need to be doing is thinking of sacred geometry maybe and getting into crystals or something really fun. Because our action is a prayer. Play a piano, sing a song, Make a piece of art, clean your house, put glitter all over your bed, piss off your husband because he got glitter on himself, whatever. Everything that you do is a prayer. And so all of our actions and our passions lead to a communication with God. And it's awesome. Love. And so you say, love is but a thought and a dream. But what if it's a light? And what if this light can be touched? And what if it can be put 
inside us and then shine so bright that other people feel it and they're like, I love you and I don't know why. And you're like, well, it's not me. It's this light inside of me. <laughs> it never goes out. I can't sleep. That's why I'm so angry. <laughs> But no, it's like a glow-in-the-dark light. It's like a light that is all ever-present within you, and it makes you glow, and it makes other people glow, and they love you and all that. Mushi, the butterfly, says hello. Mushi wants to anoint your piece with high frequency. This is 320 hertz frequency from Rose Essential Oil. And we're going to anoint here. Zoom, zoom. And here, zoom, zoom. I'm actually going to use two papers today. This one and this one. This is a new paper that I just purchased. And you can't see it, but it has these lines on it. And I don't like that. So if it bothers me too much, we will do this reading. And then we will do another one on this paper because I don't want... I don't want things to get in my way. I'm very picky about my paper because it has to be flat, no lines, no pores. It needs to be completely flat. Of course, I also do art on wood, and wood has a lot of lines, but we just did a cabinet the other day, and I love doing art on wood, so we're going to turn her into a cabinet. Um... And so, let's do a meditation. <laughs> Veronica. Ooh. I see you sitting by a fire and I'm with you. And um, there are ancient truths being spoken by some grandfather. And you and I are holding hands. And um, this grandfather says, you know, certain things are sacred. That's why the word sacred sounds like secret. Not everyone should know. These things are held in our hearts as a light. This precious light must be protected and preserved. If we open our mouths and we let the light out to the wrong person, it can be destroyed. If God, which can manifest as an animal or a wolf, comes and gives you a sign that you should share this sacred truth, like a white stag or a white wolf or a white rabbit, then that's how you know it's okay to share the white light of truth. But not everyone should know this truth. And you and I are holding hands, listening to this grandfather. And we make a promise. And we look at each other and we saw this white stone on the ground. And in your hand and my hand, we protected this stone. And we said, we will keep what must be sacred, sacred. And we made a promise. Okay, you ready? Spirit, thank you for coming forward for Veronica to tell us what must be sacred and must be kept sacred. <laughs> Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Yet some say love, it is a It is a flower 
And you are only seed. It's the heart afraid of breaking that never takes the chance. It's the dream afraid of waking that never learns to dance. So you have a lot of people coming forward for you, Veronica. Um, hmm. Let's sit and just look at this for a moment. Um, it is as if there are people sitting around a fire um, and there are snakes protecting the fire. Um, and, and there's a koala bear. And there's a, a woman with a crown. She is, she speaks, um, an ancient voice of something like an ancient language, a language that was powerful that we have forgotten. Uh, but she's, she's um, taking two symbols and hitting them together while she speaks, like, uh, like Hawthor would, kind of very similar to Hawthor. So let's go ahead and bring this one out because I'm really, really liking this uh, person. This person could be you. I'm not really sure yet. And um, this it has a, a bird on up here that is connected to um, thoughts that travel. And she is taking two symbols and smashing them together. And the symbols have a frequency. And the frequency, um, I don't know what it does. But anyway... I can just see her voice go out and she speaks. Thank you so much for the gifts, you guys. I love you. Um, she speaks and um, has something to say and is really about this white bird, really about protecting our heads at this time, really about um, protecting our spirit and um, and opening up a book of truth that has been kept from us and wants to show us. It says U.S. And um, so she is kneeled down like this. And um, we will go back to her. But it's almost like the... The symbol creates like a dodecahedron and it is a very powerful sound and uh, I don't know, I don't know what that means yet. Um, she did have a koala bear on her. And now I don't see the koala bear again, but I want you to know that. Just keep that in mind. It could be a play on words. It could be a spirit guide. I'm not really sure yet. If it shows up again, I'll let you know. So, so there's this man. And I will say that his face takes a strange shape like this and then there's uh, a being with a very elongated head here and uh
you know what it reminds me of is a tree person. Um, but, it, uh, hmm. Um. I'm going to have to get clarification on this one. I need to know what this is. So there are all these like elder people sitting around um, looking at information and and um, this uh, everything on the head is is a communication. So on his head is an alien looking. But maybe not alien, maybe that it, an Egyptian god. They had the elongated heads. But then the bird, and then this one has something completely different, and they have something different on their heads. And everyone is learning something about. So let's go ahead and just bring everybody out because I can't make sense of it yet. I would have to say this. Once upon a time, we were a collective consciousness. Our thoughts flew like a bird. I could feel you. You could feel me. We could talk to each other over great distances. We could talk to animals. We could talk to anything. The bird on the head reflects that we could fly like a bird anywhere we wanted to go. Talk to water, talk to trees, talk to people. We could see through people's eyes. We could travel great distances in a flash. And then uh, the bird was cut off and replaced by this and a card, like a SIM card. So something something um, happened. And so, so what happened here, so we go to, we were, we were we weren't just one person we were we were a collective we were us and then we became individualized so this is some this man is telling us something that happened and then she's holding this egg or something that was cut like that and um just wanting us to realize 
that there was this thing, you hold it like this, and what it does is when you pull on it, you pull it in and you pull it out and it actually creates a sound and this sound um, does something Uh, could you tell me what the sound did? What did this sound do to... Um, so there's a, a, a spigot like this and a water spigot. So it's a, a, a way of talking to water. Um, and... Uh, uh, it, there, you guys, uh, there's uh, you had allies that were... Nature was your ally, like water was your ally. Ooh, the, then um, um, there's somebody being raised up from the ground. Their hair is falling down. They are levitating. And uh, Oh, yeah. Um, you know how we used to heal each other was woo, different a long time ago. And this person is being levitated. And uh, but see, everything was done through sound. But there's this device, and it's like, um, I don't know what it is. You, you pull it, and the center of it makes a sound, and, it, and, and you, you usher in an ally, and the ally was nature, and nature would come, and you have this fox or strange-looking animal here, um, that all the animals, the nature, water, everything was an ally if you knew how to use it. To do all kinds of amazing things. So animals are going to be down here. Elements of water. Earth are here. Humans are here. Humans have sound. The sound does stuff. So let's, let's continue. Why this being took over the bird. And is handing us a card like a SIM card or some kind of card taking over our consciousness where we became very separated from nature and each other, which made us so alone that um, it's the elephant that was put into the carnival. Like, I feel like I'm going to cry. So the story of the elephant is on 11-11, predating medieval times, the elephant was stolen from its family. And it was put into a prison to do stupid acts and to perform things in a tent um, and chained up. And so the carnival was always celebrated on 11-11, November 11th every year, predating medieval times. And it, 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 this is the carnival tent. So there's something that trapped us. We were put into a trap. Our consciousness was trapped. Something happened. And our bird was cut. And the bird keeps trying to get back in. I, I, I want to come back. I want to come back. I want to become part of something amazing again. Where, why won't you let me in? And um, so let's talk to this guy. Because I, I hope he's not a jerk. But if he's a jerk, then we will have a talk with this jerk. Um. So, why is the bird gone? So, uh, there is a bull. And I know the bull from Mithra was the bull was cut. And that's the moon. 
And so something happened. And um, the gin. I see something dark. Was it the gin? It was, um, what is it? Dagon. It says Dagon. So, little cards inside the head. Like nanotechnology, I don't know. What is this? This is many things, um... It is the Jin. D J I N N. But it's a dog. And I know the Jin comes forward as a dog. The symbol of the Jin is a dog, but it, this is a, is a, is a curse and a blessing. The dog is a curse and the and then the dog turns into Sirius B the dog star, which ends up um helping us. But anyway, this part right here is a leprechaun. And it reminds me of the Shrek story where Shrek signed a contract with a leprechaun and the leprechaun put Shrek into a reality, Rumpelstiltskin. And, the, and this reality, we lo he lost his home. He lost his wife. He lost everything because he signed a contract with Rumpelstiltskin. And so the bird was changed to the, uh, a Rumpelstiltskin, meaning that our reality was somehow shifted to not a true reality or something happened. And then there's like a television there. Our telepathic vision turned into the mind of Rumpelstiltskin. A trick. Some trick. And then over the eyes is a spaceship. And, uh, and our eyes changed into a different eyes. And uh, so anyway... Let's go back over here. And I'm going to do one just for you, Veronica. But I just kind of want to understand. I get this vibe that there's something that needs to be said about uh, things that we have forgotten. And um, I think that if you need to recapitulate something, you should recapitulate re Rumpelstiltskin. It's a jerk. It's a contract that put us in a reality that isn't our intended reality. So something we have to do. So let's see here. Everybody has a blanket over their knees. Like this way, goes this way. And, um, and there's these people died. And, uh, and they're all being raised up. See, we didn't die before. We had we had we had knowledge of how to raise up. And now we don't. Now something happened. Raise up, raise up, raise up. One, two, three. And then um what was gone was reenacted through allies. Allies of nature. Water, flowers. I don't see fire, but animals, we worked together as one. We didn't die. We were just one, and then something happened, and it was a contract. It was something that that we agreed to, and we were we didn't know. We didn't know any better. It's, see, there's a man behind that person right there. But certain symbols made certain sacred geometrical shapes, and the sacred geometrical shapes was a bumblebee and the bumblebee was the sound of God 
and you could make a sound and God would come and God would fill you up with life energy and, um, and, um, magic. It was magic. Actually, I just see magic, lots of magic. This being here, um, wants to talk. This being was, uh, a statue was made of this is a man. And he has a sacred geometrical shape on top of his head, like this, and like this, and then this strange shape that goes like this and that, and says, um, says, my hand is your hand, your mind is my mind, the two hands are together, we all held this electricity the same electricity in our hands. Until we were stolen like an elephant. <laughs> and then it says V A. H A Vaha, maybe that's like Vahala, maybe Norse mythology, something there that some energy came, maybe like Nor Norse people came, I don't know, something, something came and took away so much knowledge that we are where we are now, but all these people. They've been resurrected through this electricity, electromagnetic energy, and the electromagnetic energy came from the animals too. And raised people up where one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, there was no death. Dead, alive. Dead, alive. But now here, something changed. Doesn't matter. We're going to go back to the truth. And um, it says L. And then there's a baby that's upside down. This is usually a, a miscarriage or an abortion. Somebody in the family that lost a child, uh, a baby upside down is um, uh, upside down world, something there. Now, it says E V Eve, Yvette. Eve, cry, E.T. Um, defeated, defeated, defeated. Um, um, uh, C. Vexed, vexed, um, uh, vamp. There's something here, V A, and then it turns to an M or an X, V A, X, V A, M, and then it says E T, and then um, it keeps changing on me. There's a word here. But um, look at all the white. So there's a white here. See, we had, a, we had an energy in our heart that was very powerful. 
And they took that energy and put it in our head. And it wasn't supposed to be in our head. It was supposed to stay in our heart. And it was switched to the head. And it was circle, but it changed to a square. A square. But it was a circle. And it was at our heart. Here. Uh, uh, it's like God was in our heart. We had a power in our heart. They took the power out of our heart and put it into the head. Messed everything up. <laughs> Which is why the Rumpelstiltskin has a hat. With his square. We went from a circle to a square. We went from a power in our heart to a power in our head, which messed everything up. And power the power that went into the head took the bird off the head. And the bird switched to this symbol. And, um, and we're trying to get back to what we were. Because what we were was more natural and more in divine order. And we used nature and animal and water and fire as a spirit to, to help us all live forever. Not just one. Every living being on this earth was eternal. And we, lurked, we worked in, in a divine unison of an ebb and a flow. You know? And, and then we were... Mm, this is jerk, jerk land over here. And notice one person is noticing... What happened? The others are just busy raising the dead, busy doing divine and great things using sound. But but this person, this person um, is the one. It's almost like a like a Judas from um, Jesus. There was one person who signed a contract with a Rumpelstiltskin, and the bird was lost. So anyway. Um, let's just think about this for a little while, but, um, it looks like a male energy really came forward from, for you to tell you some things about your history and the gen that messed with our genes and our spirit. And then you have this older woman who wanted to, uh, remind you that we are all connected and as one. And then I believe this is you. And you're part of four sisters or four females. And uh, you did great in many things. You were magical beings. You did things with your hands. You did things with elements You were, and sound and your mind, of course. And you weren't just you because behind the woman is an invisible man. And this invisible man, you can't see him. there so we did great things in the past and we were vaxxed or vetted or something there so anyway let's go to you i want to just look at you we're going to do this one here say 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 what you want, but don't leave me, cause I love you, 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 you. Mm -hmm. My affection, girl to you, girl to get through to you, cause I love you, baby. Through the years, baptized in all my tears. To get through to you, you know I'm crying. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is you, Veronica. This is a, a, a message from spirit to you only. Not your, not your, your, um, not anybody else but you. There's a man coming forward giving you a very big hug. 
This man is smiling at you and it's like, it's like I'm looking at a picture. Um, for some reason, this male and female energy is very powerful. It's like you share the same eye. And there's a moon and a sun coming together. There's water. And the water is the shape of a fish. You're holding a wand and you're hitting the wand with water. It's something about you and water. Something about you and... the bald eagle. The age of Aquarius pouring out, but you have a wand. Nope, it is some device. You know what, Veronica, I swear, you need to get into some kind of device and start making sound because here you are holding something that I saw in your other piece and it is a sound that hits water and this water, um, uh, makes things happen. Oh, he says the Rumpelstiltson contract has been cut. It's time to go back to the way things were. Eloto, E L O, Eloto, E L E T O, Elicio, something, some name is coming forward here. Um, so anyway, he is putting his finger in between the contract, and I think this is a symbol that, you know, the ancients, uh, they cutting the contract of signing some kind of strange contract, and the age of Aquarius is putting us back to our original power, our original knowledge, and our original eternal male-female body through connecting to water, connecting to animals, and, um, and leaving behind the world of the dead, which is the age of Pisces. And bringing back that bird on our head that cracks our head open like an egg. Ah, a uh, truth that we, that we forgot. So there we go. We're coming back. We're going back to our original form. It looks like the... Eagle is eating an eyeball. And I think that this is, no, it's not eating an eyeball. It's giving us our eyes back. We lost an eye and we're getting our eyes back. It is the eagle that is bringing back life. You have a power that um, that is within your DNA of your of your blueprint of your soul, 
of some kind of ethereal um, um, luminous light body power that is connected to water and sound and eternal life. It looks as if you could raise the dead or do some amazing things if you remember We are in the year of the water rabbit. This water rabbit is very significant. And um, it, is, it is the days of Noah returning. Where the days of Noah is, Noah had eyes made of light. And the, this, this um, eagle is giving our eyes back that were made of light. The two eyes, the, the male and the female, returning. And so the water pouring out is letting go of the age of Pisces and the age of death. We are going back to what was once lost. The contract has been cut. We don't have to live under that contract anymore. Somehow the contract was cut and your energy is here to remember some of these secrets you actually work with the energy of the eagle. You need to connect with the energy of the eagle. The eagle and you work together. This, this male counterpart works with the energy of the horse for, to do great things. So the horse and the eagle work together. Um, the rabbit and the fish were together. And then the sun and the moon were together. The male and the female were together. And, um, and then there's this this energy over here, it's a cute little dog um, being licked or, or healed by, um, by a phoenix or some kind of bird. Is it a, what is it? Nope. No, it is not. It is a sacred geometrical shape. It is a shape and and out of your this is your heart emits this energy and it has words and sounds and it says um isa um uh, isis maybe uh, um elo elocio it's like another language. I don't know. And, um, and you have these shapes. Make sure that you're feeding your holy temple water at this time. There's a soda can. No ma'am, no way. Certain drinks are death. They are the Rumpelstiltskin. Um, drink water. And water is life. Water is truth. Spring water, well water uh, will give you memories back. You must drink living waters. And not drink anything else. No soda. Zero. Not ever again. It does something to us.
sing a, a song, a new song. Let the words flow. Sing a song of being happy that we are returning back to the old days. The old contract has been cut. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not true. Don't let anyone tell you that we're not, that things aren't getting, if someone tells you, oh no, things are not getting better. If somebody tells you, oh no, it's not true. Don't listen. It's time to step back into our power again. It's time to our, to our power, our power, our power, our power, our power is collective. And we need to tell everybody and we need to call forward the energy of the eagle and the horse and sacred geometry and that which was lost. This is so cute. You have this pretty little girl here, really pretty little girl here with, um, she's like a warrior. She stands there waiting. She waits to be able to be set free. And she came out of a dodecahedron. She came out of this symbol here. She came out of a Merkaba. We come out of Merkabas. She, she's coming out. And, um, and something about sharing the same mind here. Haya. Haya has returned. There's a shape of a stomach here. Um, you are being told uh, to watch what you eat. Let your daily bread be life energy. I know you've seen me go live before. I know you've heard this before. But let me just reiterate because spirit is showing the shape of a stomach and stares. And it looks like there, if there's anything hindering you, Veronica, don't eat the Rumpelstiltskin food. Um, life food. Death food. Your uh, body is connected to your spirit. Your spirit needs to be fed too. And if our body takes up too much power, our spirit that begins to die. Our memory dies. So the very first thing that you do to make sure that you have life energy, not death energy, is think in terms of frequency. A healthy human is between 70 and 100 hertz. Somebody who dies is 25 hertz. If your immunity is compromised because we're eating pasteurized, processed, imitation, poisonous foods, we usually um, begin to get sick at 62 hertz frequency. So the Rumpelstiltskin wants you to eat death food. Soda is 15 hertz or less. Pasteurized, processed, imitation, chips, all that stuff is all low frequency, which will compromise your immunity. Water. If you don't, if you don't have well water or spring water, go make best friends with somebody who does, and go ask for that water. We need a resource. Water that is living. No fluorinated, chlorinated water. Drink water only. No soda. Nuts. Fruits. Things that fall off of a tree. Honey. Um, herbs. Sun gazing with your eyes closed, going underwater, the ocean, negative ions. Your heart emits in a neg negative ions. Negative ions are healthy. You are a natural negative ion emitter. You have sweaty, uh, salty sweat. You have tears that are salty. Salt and heat makes negative ions. The earth is full of negative ions. The problem is our cell phone and 5G towers, computers, technology emits positive ions. Bacteria is a positive ion. So your ethereal net looks like a torus field that looks like an apple.
So an apple with a bite out of it, like a cell phone, is something that messes up our negative ions and puts positive ions in it, getting into our Taurus field and keeping us from God and truth. So you need to fight cell phones and positive ions by adopting negative ions. Go hug a tree, take a bath with salt, put salty powder on your head, and emit more negative ions. All right. Himalayan sea salt has over 84 minerals. Make sure you're eating minerals. And um, get back into sound. 963 hertz. Get back into a collective consciousness, knowing you're not alone. You have many people with you. They want you to remember death, fear, propaganda, false media. I'll just put this here. Um, sugar. Don't eat sugar. If you can, eat honey. Um, what is bread? Bread is glue. How do you make glue? Flour and water makes glue, makes, you, makes it very sticky. You're going to want to minimize the amount of bread you eat. Don't eat glue. Um, it, glue was good for us when we were kids. It's okay. <laughs> when we were kids, we could eat anything. Now, for some reason, as we are merging the crystallization of spirit within the flesh and we're becoming half flesh, half spirit, for some reason, eating glue, which is bread, is not good for us. I, I just minimize it. I just, for me, once in a great while, I'll have bread, but I don't eat it daily or even weekly. I, I minimize that in my body because your spirit needs you to have enough power so you can hear it. And so you're going to want to raise your frequency through water. Also, you need to make sure that your pH is balanced. It should not be acidic or alkaline to alkaline. It should be 7.0. If your pH is acidic, you will feel angry and have emotional issues. If, if it is too alkali, you'll also not be okay. Make sure your pH is 7.0. pH and hydration are the foundation of life energy. The doctors won't tell you this. If you go to the doctor and you tell them you're sick, they don't check your hydration or your pH, but those are the two main things that actually help your body to operate properly. pH, water, and negative ions makes you a very powerful being. Living waters, you can take a tuning fork and hit it and breathe it up your nose and it goes straight to your pineal gland and it activates the water in your brain and your brain is 88% water. And this frequency activates the water and the water does something amazing. And so if the water is dead, it doesn't do anything. The Egyptians used to hit the onk and breathe the onk up their nose like a drug. So take some frequency, breathe it up your nose. And make sure that what you're drinking is living water. Stay away from the Rumpelstiltskin food and the Rumpelstiltskin sodas and stuff. Because our eyes are being returned to us. Our eyes of light are being returned. The old ways are being returned. And we are going back. And the Rumpelstiltskin healthcare system and the Rumpelstiltskin food and the Rumpelstiltskin contracts and the Rumpelstiltskin everything. The false light, the false bird. Um, is, is, is now we're diminishing it because everything that we did under the Rumpelstiltskin mind was harming the earth, harming the animals, harming ourselves, harming each other. And it was all because we couldn't hear the heart and we didn't have the eyes. It was taken from us. So for some reason you are connected to a male energy and Haya is the goddess of Sirius be the dog star and Haya is connected to Gaia. 
Haya and Gaia are the same person. The, the God from Armenia was named Ar. How great thou art. Our Father God is what they used to call this God. It's the sun God. And the goddess of the god Ar from Armenia, our father was Haya. Now, Haya was changed to Gaia. And so this is all about earth. And Gaia, the earth mother, has returned. And you are here to be the hands and the eyes of this Haya Gaia. To return the eyes to people who have lost their eyes to see through the heart chakra and the, the deception of the food that poisoned us. And now coming out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, like a set of stairs going up and envisioning sacred geometry and the Merkaba and the contract that's been broken, the letter E, earth. So this is very, very positive for you. <clears throat> very powerful. Get back into frequency. It's in your blood. It's in your... Uh, you are probably part of all of these people. You are... Well, you raise the dead. Well, you are a medicine woman. Well, you used sound and... I don't know what the flower means. You um, have the word L... And uh, you, and it says Maya, M-Y-A, Maya, M-Y-A. You, um, um, I, I don't know why that baby went into the dog. But anyway, maybe the dog is the Maya Gaia. Haya, Gaia, Maya. I don't know. Something happened there. But um, get back into sound. But use your voice and call back your bird. And say, I don't know why I allowed my bird to go away. And the, the grandfather man said, let's let him talk to you. He says, what was sacred should have been kept sacred. We don't let everyone have our bird. We cannot give our bird away to just anyone. And we will never do it again. What must be sacred must be kept sacred. Rumpelstiltskin, jerk, jerk. They don't get to have the bird. They may not be real anyway. Something about them. Something very strange. How could they not be part of nature? And water and earth and this. How could they not? Might be. Connected to either the djinn. Or the vampire. But um, we don't want to get rid of our bird, which is the Holy Spirit, which is a collective consciousness connected to the all anymore. I guess that is the battle between the vampire and the dog, the vampire and the wolf. The vampire says, drink my blood and live forever. That's what Jesus said. That's what Mithra said. The vampire does live forever, but the vampire maybe uses artificial technology to live forever. And the wolf uses a collective consciousness and energy to live forever. Knowing that we don't die We are each other, but the vampire, I don't know, something's going on there. And I don't want to put it in concrete terms because I don't really know, but um, all I'll say is that um, I think that 
um, we're going back to a collective consciousness and we just need to become children again. We need to have the heart of a child and get rid of the, the ego because it was the heart that was in control to begin with. And when the mind became in control, then we became jerks. We are not separated. We never were. But um, don't worry. We're going back. We're going to go back to playing hide and go seek and, and getting into frequency and getting into being in love with God, being in love with each other, being in love with nature, being in love with truth and life. And the elephant will come out of the tent and be released back into thing. And that is a spaceship here. Right over the eyes. What I have a hard time with when I do these readings is I don't know if I'm telling you the truth because it seems like a story. It seems like it's not true, but um, I don't know. It feels right to me. You decide for you. You come up with what you believe is true for you. It has the letter M, O, Um, there's, there's some kind of M word coming over. We saw Maya, uh, Moya, M O, and then M like the original mom here. So I'll try to pull back so you can take a, a snapshot of this and look at this. This is an incredible read actually, because I'll tell you this, I've had contradicting thoughts, the alien and artificial intelligence and the vampire seem to have some good points, to be honest. However, the wolf also has very good points. The wolf lives forever through each other. The vampire wants to maintain its individuality. And when we're so connected to our face, it, it, it causes a problem. Um, we should all just be connected to consciousness. We should all be wanting to be eternal with memory and consciousness, not the body. And I don't know. I see, I see a good point on each end, but I, I think that it's time that um, we transform into our rainbow light bodies and go with God and go with truth and leave behind all that is false. So I don't know what this battle is, but it's a battle between vampires and wolves. Yeah, one, one of the... Okay, so the wolf is warm-blooded and is one with nature and utilizes sound, nature, spirit, consciousness as one mind and one spirit, one energy going in a divine flow. And the vampire is more artificial and um, takes our consciousness and we actually lose memory, something going on there. And there's the djinn. And the vampire. But here's the thing. I mean, I know Christ is connected to the vampire. He's the one who says, drink my blood and live forever like Mithra. But I also saw Christ on the spirit realm. And he said, I never meant for you to pray to me. Follow me. Follow me. And you'll know me. Know me. And you'll become me. And when you become me, you won't need me. You you follow a path of a Christ consciousness that turns you into the rainbow light body. But maybe there was a false Christ. Because the true Christ that I saw was a Christ that was connected to a collective consciousness that was a divine order of God, which is the dog. Divine order of God is dog, and dog spelled backwards is God, right? So, of course, you follow the wolf. The wolf is the dog. The dog is God. But the vampire, I think that the vampire, uh, I think there was a false Christ that came 
and um, it's more connected to the jinn and artificial intelligence. And so many of us were deceived by that falseness and, um, and we lost our bird, which is the Holy Dove, the Holy Spirit. However, we are becoming aware in this age of Aquarius and the contracts that we signed are being broken and the eagle is returning our eyes and the horse is returning our mind and our hearts and we are letting go of the false food and the false spirit uh, and we're going back to the truth. Um, and the truth is within our hearts and all you have to do is follow your heart your heart will tell you the truth. Your heart is 5,000 times stronger than your brain. And so believe in synchronicity. Believe in our collective consciousness. Believe that when you connect with me and I connect with you, we see things together. Believe that powerfully we can do things. We, are, we can do magical things. We are turning into a crystalline body again. Look at these females and don't see them as flesh. See them as crystalline. They float. They fly. If you have a crystalline body that is that can shape shift and can um, and become part of any consciousness, then there is no death. You don't have to sign a contract with a vampire who wants you to live forever. We already live forever. So there's the V. There's the A, vampire. V-A. So, and what is Valhalla? V-A. What is Vatican? V-A. What is Vax? V-A. What is Valhalla? V-A. This vampire was a f false uh, SIM card something happened so v a but it that's the opposite it should be a v oh a v spells avatar what? Anyway, V A A V. Anyway, I'm not sure I can figure it all out, but you guys might be able to. You guys might know something I don't. I'm not that smart. I my heart, I my heart is very smart. My heart sees telepathic visions. My heart is telepathic. When my mind tries to understand what I see, I don't know if I'm telling you the truth. I don't know if I'm interpreting it correctly. You might have an interpretation that may be more correct than me. You need to know that. So please, yes. I'm, I'm only giving you guys some suggestions on what I believe this is, but you have a heart that knows. Now, Look at this invisible table. Is it not a table? Does it look like the Last Supper? And is this Last Supper filled with females, not males? What? Mm hmm Yava. Oh, yes. Somebody said Yava. Yes, yes, yes. The word Yava actually is in this entire shape. Y-A-V-A. -A. Oh, thank you so much, Opal Star. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Trust yourself. The thing is, is I know who's listening and there are, there are finger pointers and, you know, people who are m memorized the Bible over their heart. 
And the thing is, the Holy Spirit is connected to your heart. And the Holy Spirit has new things to tell us. And doesn't memorize a Bible, although I think the Bible could be beneficial for some people. But I am aware that people who are listening may see things differently. And that's okay, is all I'm saying. And I could be wrong. I want you guys to trust yourself and trust your interpretation as well. And and to be aware that the ego wants to be in control. And I don't want to be in control. I want... I remember somebody telling me... Um, I, I used to be a well-known tree artist. They used to call me the tree woman. And... Um, I used to interpret my pieces in art galleries and a woman named Ann Hunter, she said, Mary, stop interpreting your pieces. And I said, why? She said, because allow the soul and the subconscious to interpret it. So that's all I'm saying is I am going to interpret your piece from my heart, but this piece is a piece of art that is to be interpreted by your heart and your subconscious mind. It is not my energy. It's yours. That's, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Oh, thank you so much, Opal Star. I love you. Oh, you did. You did. You've been scrying. I'm so proud of you for scrying. If you guys have been scrying, there's going to be a, a moment when you're going to want to share your things online and show what you do and what you see. Many of you guys are starting to see amazing things and your subconscious mind and your heart wants to speak. Let your heart speak through this. Your, your heart is telepathic. So make a television. This is a telepathic vision of your heart. You can connect to anybody and see through their heart too. Ancient secrets. You know, most scryers were men, according to history. But I'm going to say, I, I think that uh, a lot of you, us as females who have very strong abilities in our heart chakra should really get into this and have fun with it. Carry the flame of truth. But don't give everyone the truth. Not everyone deserves your bird. Some jerks will take it and use it for jerk purposes. Oh, thank you, Opal Star. Oh, you have an obsidian mirror. Mirror. Ooh, I love that. Oh, Trey posted his. Oh, I'm gonna have to go look at that. Oh, you posted it today. Let me make sure I'm following you. Yeah. Okay. Trey travel. Okay. Yes, I will. I will look at yours. Let me write your your name down. Or I know. I, I know me. I'll forget. Trey. Let me write it down on a piece of paper over here. Trey Travel Wiz. Tr oh, Trey Galactic Angel. Okay, I will look at your piece. I have a hard time if you do, if you guys do scry, I will be a jerk and go, it means this, it means that, it means this, it means that. I can't help it. I see stuff. You're so welcome, Veronica. This is a very, um, a big, big, uh, big info here 
Um, it was a lot of information. Um, I would have to say that there's probably more to this story of these people who died being risen up, how there's four here and there's four there. Um, and, uh, there's probably more here than I'm able to understand, but I'll tell you this, the more you look at it and the more you see it and the more you, um, time changes and energy changes, you'll be in a different mood. You will go watch something or see something and suddenly this will completely change and the message will change and you will, um, realize things that you didn't realize before like notice this arm is her arm her arm is her arm both dead and alive two pieces one two cut in half something about we don't die we may fe may have died but we don't die number 11 their arm is your arm. There's something going on about no death. And I love it. I really, really love this piece. Fantastic, actually. I will say that this part of you, I think you're going through the quad, you're, you're going through the quadrupling. One, two, three, four. Um, there is like an anointing bottle here being poured out over. I don't know if you've thought about getting into sound and making sound and anointing and water like a baptism the way it was done in the ancient times. It's not the way it is now. It's different. It needs sound. It needs things. It needs an ally. You have to have a spiritual ally. You need an ally. You need sound. You need a collective consciousness, somehow all the elements together, the anointing oil, the baptismal water. Suddenly you bring forward the energy of water. The spirit of the water must be called forward first through some kind of string that makes a sound when you pull it. You call forward the spirit of the water, the spirit of the water, the spirit of the dog comes out when you baptize someone and they are nature allies and they can raise the dead and there's some stuff going on here our conventional baptism is like mickey mouse disney world the true baptism looks like to me you call forward the energy of the spirit nature spirit rose sound animal, collective consciousness, sound, anointing, water, life. To, to reiterate one more time, Veronica, you're going through the quadrupling. So you're at the number four. The fourth heart chakra is green. This means your heart chakra is going to start seeing truth it never saw before. Once upon a time, we were all alone, like an embryo. And suddenly our hearts began to open and we began to double. This is what Christians call being born again. And these symbols of this rebirth has stories all throughout history. So this Vesica Piscis is fire, water, fish, boat, I, Ankh, Holy Grail. All right. So when you are twice born, you get into the boat. You can only get into the boat two by two. Now you go through water and fire and eternal life and the Holy Grail and the boat and the all seeing eye. Once you're in the boat, you begin, your heart begins to grow you more. Your heart will triple you. 
you begin, your spirit grows unbeknownst to you and unseen by you. So you already got in the boat. Your heart began to grow you through knowledge, action, and obedience to feeding your holy temple life energy. Then this is where the holy dove comes in. Your bird is returned to your head. You lost your bird. I lost my bird. The bird was cut from us. We were cut, but we have to go back to getting our bird back. We were lonely. We were under mind control. Once you get into the boat, you've been twice born. You are growing your soul. When you triple yourself, you have returned your bird. Your bird is going to remind you who you are, who you were, and how to get back into magic. Becoming the master magician, becoming a master of the net, walk on water, raise the dead. You'll remember things. From there, your bird will quadruple. So this is where you are currently. Quadrupling your soul turns you into the olive branch. The olive branch is the number four. It's the fourth heart chakra. It's the cross. If we were in a box, the box opens. And when you open a box, it makes a cross. This means we have become opened. It means our heart is opened. It means we are going back home to the old ways. So the four flower is this eternal flower. It is the flower of life. And so you quadrupling your soul means it's time. It's time to see what home was like. That we were so much more. And this false mind that we ended up adopting somehow was only a mirror. A little tiny snippet energy. We don't need cars, airplanes, nothing. Our mind has the ability to travel anywhere and everywhere. In the blink of an eye. We, so all this technology that's using up natural resources, we never needed it to begin with. Our mind has amazing abilities we have forgotten. We don't need trains, planes, and automobiles. We, we can fly and have always. That's why we have a bird on our head. So sacred geometrical shape, one, two, three, and four. The fourth heart chakra is fully opened. Now all you have to do is trust Trust your heart. Your heart's going to tell you everything. And now guess what's going to happen? Every single person you meet is going to be the voice of that bird, which is like your double self or the Holy Spirit or God or whatever, or maybe uh, ancient family members. So let's say you have a, a question in your head. Now that you've quadrupled yourself, your whole world has changed. Now you'll wake up going, I wonder if I should make something out of metal or wood to call forward the spirit of water to heal people. And I don't know what I should do. Well, don't worry. That question will be answered probably within a day because that question will an be answered either on social media, on, a, on TV, maybe a program will show up, through your loved ones. Maybe you'll go to the post office. That woman will answer your question. This new world, spirit will talk through everybody. Everyone is a piece of you now. They are a mirror of God within you. Your heart and their heart will speak. It's so amazing. We do become one. You will have a question and somebody will answer you and you will say to them telepathically or otherwise, I love you so much. Now we are mirrors of each other. You answered my question. There are no, there are so many miracles are happening now. I can't even breathe, but I'm so happy. And that's how it's going to work now. Everyone is the voice of God now. And this spirit has the ability to talk through everyone, everyone. And suddenly you'll walk into the post office and she'll say, Oh, that's so funny. You know, I was just thinking the other day of um, the element of gold 
and I was thinking about getting some gold or getting some lead or getting some certain metal. And you'll know for a fact that that was spirit telling you, yes, you need to get this certain particular thing to create this, to call forward the spirit of water, to, to do things, to manifest things, to create miracles. Walk on water, raise the dead. It's time. And it happened to me. It happened to me just yesterday. Uh, 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 let me show you. Let me show you this. Hold on. So I was doing somebody's reading. And this is a miracle. But it, it happens a lot. So I was making Lori's video. Oh, sorry about the noise. Hold on. I was making Lori's video for her piece. I was painting it digitally and all this stuff. Last night, my husband and I were watching the movie Vikings. And um, the movie went off, or the show went off. And another show just randomly showed up. It was like the next thing that just came on. And I was like, oh, brother. Well, anyway, it was about an, an Egyptian named Akhenaten. This is Ak Akhenaten here and here. Akhenaten is is closely connected to roses, pyramids, lions, frogs, turtles. His name is Akhenaten, and there's another name of him that starts with the letter A too. So he is A A. That's him in the pyramid A A. He showed up to tell us that the age of Pisces is dead. SD card, RH negative blood, electricity, that we are now shifting into rainbow light crystallized bodies. And it's time to get into the arc and to imagine sacred geometry, imagine sacred geometry over our head and our body like a Merkaba. And this God isn't dead. This God came to tell Lori that to light ourselves up like electricity, it's time. And I would have never known who he was if it didn't randomly show up on my uh, in, on our television yesterday. I would have never known what AA meant or what this God meant. I had no idea who this God was. Likewise, I was um, I had a question in my mind about something, and I went to the post office. Usually people out here are so religious, the only thing they ask you is what church do you go to? I walked into the post office. She was like, how is your day going today? How are you feeling today? And I'm like, what? Where is this, where is this conversation going? Are you going to ask me to church? Like, what's going on? I was like, my vibes are busy. I'm having to mail out packages. I have a lot of readings to do. I am, you know, I'm just very busy all the time. And she was like, Yes, a lot of changes are in the world. It was as if God was talking to me through this woman. And I was like, yeah, uh-huh. I said, I think we need to keep our heart on joy because I think that many of us are here to um, to do great things. And I, I don't think that the world matters anymore. We're shifting. And she goes, you know, I was just, and whatever she said was just like so spot on with what I was questioning and what I was thinking. And I parted with the conversation knowing I don't live in the same world anymore. The world that I lived in, everyone I spoke to was a jerk. Almost everybody. Whenever I, I felt lonely, somebody would be mean to me. <laughs> it was like I was in the muggle world. Oh, hi, Harry Potter. You lost your mother and your father. Well, here, let me put you under the staircase and kick your door and make you wear raggedy clothing and tell you you're a piece of garbage. That's how I saw the world before. Now we've shifted. Now all of a sudden, people see me and God sees me and I have a question and people speak and they're like, blah. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm so glad you didn't invite me to church. <laughs> Thank you, God, for not inviting me to church. I am so happy. <laughs> Um, 
if we had if we had one of these readings done before, are we able to get another one? Of course. Of course you are. However, I always encourage you guys to not make it a habit. Not because I don't love doing readings for you. I do. I encourage you guys to not be addicted to seeking answers outside of yourself. You should hear the voice of God and your higher self within you and see it and all that. I know. But uh, you are absolutely. However, I will also give you another warning. I am booked up all the way to I have March 20th. March 23rd, March 24th. I took 17th and 18th off. It's my husband's birthday. So I could do March 16th at 3.30. March 20th, March 23rd, March 24th. I could do 3.30 here. Um, I could do two there. But, uh, but yeah, there is a wait time though. Oh, thank you. I have done a lot of personal work on my readings with the hidden messages. That's what I hope you guys do. I hope when you get readings from me or anybody else who does the art of scrying, that you do your own research. And don't just... I want you to be like Luna Lovegood. I want you to be a lunatic, like Luna Lovegood. Go ahead and be a lunatic. All right? Take your pieces, turn them upside down. And just look. Let your eyes go from right down, back up, top again, and then stop at the top, and then go back to the left, and back up and around and back to the top again. Okay, Let's begin to see things from different angles. Turn it this way. Do the same thing. Let your eyes go this way. Stop. Go back this way. Stop. Now, you, what it is, is you're trying to unsee what you see here. And that way you can get a better perspective of your pieces. Because there may be something that we miss. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you, Trey. Turn things around. Look at them from a different perspective. Not to mention, thank you, Terry. I love you. Not to mention, mirror your pieces. Trey, take this as a suggestion also. When you're done with your pieces... Get an um, app or something that helps you to mirror your pieces. We live in a dual reality. And so we're only seeing half-truths much of the time. Take your piece and mirror it and squeeze it in until it makes something significant. And this will give you another perspective and another truth. The center is always the truth. So... Like if you were to take this piece and mirror it and squeeze it in, this circle would turn into one circle. Her face would turn into his face. They would become one being. The eagle would be very close to the horse. The person who is this energy of being asleep and the, this would actually diminish. The word Haya would change. And so do that. Mirror your pieces and see what truth comes forward. Because you're making a television. This is a telepathic vision of your heart and by extension God and by extension a collective consciousness. And that's the story of this. The two circles that are apart, the two circles that are apart. If you were to mirror this, the two circles become one. Oh, you're so welcome. I want to, I, I just am so excited about you guys taking up the 
torch and the flame of becoming a scryer. The more you practice it, the more you get into your groove. And then spirit in your heart begins to really perfect your your gift and your alchemy. And just know that you're you're now in like an alchemist. An alchemist is someone who perfects their craft to the point where they begin to seek God and not themselves in their craft. Before, like when I used to be a tree artist and a singer and all this, I was like, that's me. My name's Mary Moses. I'm the singer. I'm the artist. But the more I grow spiritually and the more I practice this craft, the more I'm like, it was never me. The energy of my heart and by extension, God was moving through me. And um, I should have probably never even put my name on it. (laughs) Because uh, we are all copies of each other. We all copycat language, thoughts, clothing, religions, philosophies. So when I write a song, I write a song because of your energy. If I do a reading for you and I come up with a song and I write a song because of your art, is it my song? Is it your song? It's our song. Is this art my art? It is not my art. It is our art. Everyone here helped. Every one of you. Do I sign this art? No. Because it's your art. It's my art. It's our art. It's not my song or your song. It is our song. People... um always warn me, Mary, you should copyright this. You should be careful. People will steal your stuff. People have been stealing my stuff for a long time. Believe me, a long time ago, I wrote, I wrote a song and, um, I posted it on YouTube and Gwen Stefani wrote the exact same song after I posted it. The song that I wrote was You just want to love me, baby, under my dress. All right, this was a long time ago. Then suddenly, Gwen Stefani wrote a song called, You Just Love Me, Will You Love Me Underneath It All? And it had the very same sound and the very same thing. And on YouTube, I wrote, that was my original song. Well, I don't care. Really, I don't. Why? Because we're all sharing. Am I going to copyright everything? I invented these cabinets. Nobody makes cabinets like these that I know of. Not anywhere on earth. They have faces. They are communications to your double self. They have doors that open. But are they my invention? I was impregnated with an idea and created it from God. I probably connected to you or someone very creative and and thoughtful. I probably picked it up from you. Many people invent things because they got a telepathic message from somebody else who thought about it first. Was it theirs? Or did they get the message from somebody in the air? I... I just don't like the idea of this is mine, that's yours. And I know it's okay, you know, to have pride in your work, have pride in what you do. Absolutely. But we would all be lying if we said that that it was all us and no one else. Because when we read for each other, when, when we do the art of scrying, it is God, me, and you. And it is not me. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out. I had low self-worth. I needed a mommy, daddy, sister, brother, aunt, uncle to love me. That's why I still go on TikTok because I still have that. I still don't want to be alone. I still want to love the world. I am always here because I want to love the world and I want the world to love me back. I am so in love with people and 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 the world. Um 
But I have learned to diminish myself to understand that we could never do anything alone. It is always a collective thing. Yeah, all one. And so I have a um, SoundCloud and um, I just, all the songs that I write are your songs. Songs that I, that, that you guys inspire me to write. And they're from your energy, not me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we all help each other grow, decode, and flourish. Yes, 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 yes. Love that. I used to scribble and got an idea to use charcoal from you. And just, wow, I see more clear. Yes, and if you don't have charcoal, you can go burn a piece of wood and grind it into a nice flat piece and do nice circular shapes. Now, I will tell you, I just did a YouTube video. We went live yesterday where I did a very informative class on becoming a scryer. The mental aspect, the physical aspect, and the spiritual aspect. And, and I posted it, it's already there. So you can go look at it on Mary Moses Art and, and see that and watch that. Um, I try to do classes all the time, but suffice it to say, every time I go live, you're, you can learn um, how to do this. I've been doing it for 15 years and I began doing it as an accident. It was purely by accident that I realized that um, things were just there that I didn't, that I knew nothing about. And, um, and I think, you know, I don't know if it's a gift, but I think that once our heart chakras are open, I believe we could all do it. I've seen many of you guys see amazing things that look like communications from God. And um, I think that we have to believe in magic. You have to believe that you're magical. Oh, you showed me what I was doing. Yes. Sometimes it's just a matter of not knowing, you know, like, what is going on here? Should I, you know, like, mm. do you know how many times I've gone live when I first started doing this and I would just start sweating because I wasn't sure if I would be able to see because I had, um, I, I, I didn't have complete faith in what I was doing. Sometimes I'm still like that. If I don't connect with your energy very strongly, I'm like, oh, I don't know here. And then I see stuff like artificial intelligence everywhere. And I'm like, am I dealing with somebody who's artificially intelligent? <laughs> Sometimes I am like that. But I don't say it out loud, of course. But you will go through those. And you will feel those feelings. But just trust the process nonetheless. Know that whatever comes forward is meant to come forward. And l allow yourself to make mistakes. And, I, and the best way to make a mistake and, and not look like a fool or to be arrogant and a jerk is to say, I could be wrong. This is what I'm seeing. I could be wrong, but this is the vibe I get. This is what I'm feeling, and it's okay. You've been using AI to build my website. Yeah, of course. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. I love you guys. Well, Veronica, let's go ahead and close out your reading. And also, I need you to do a favor for me. It's a great favor, actually. And the favor is, I've had so many birthdays this month. And Spirit is asking me to take these readings slower. Why? I don't know. But like Lori, it was almost two weeks ago that I finished her art. It wasn't until last night that Spirit showed me who that God was that showed up in her art. So if your piece takes me over a week to make the video, I need you to trust in divine timing and trust that I'm not 
being lazy or anything. It's just, I think we're all being pushed to trust no matter how long. Because for some reason, spirit has its own time. And I abide by that time. Sometimes I can make your video quick and I hear the voice quick and it happens quick, right? But I'm not under the power of money. I'm not under the power of anything. I, we're under the power of a divine timing. And this divine timing will happen exactly when it's meant to happen. And you will be ready for it when it is ready. You will feel it telepathically and you will know. So trust that, please, because... I've got a lot going on in my life and I don't want to rush your peace and I don't want to feel rushed and I want Divine Spirit to speak exactly when it's meant to be. I think it's my fault because I gave you guys a promise. Oh, give me three days or give me a week and I'll finish it when sometimes it's not that simple. It is a beautiful time to be alive. I love you guys. What? Y'all are so amazing. All right. Does anybody need a reading? Free time. Ding, ding, ding. This means where are you spiritually? You have a jerk on you. You need to get a jerk off of you. You want to connect with somebody. Anything that you need to help raise your vibes at this time. Thank you, Veronica. I'm telling you, your piece is so amazing. You taught us a lot. I'm going to put you with Lori here. And put that back. There we go. And where is my other thing? What did I do with it? Oh, down here. Here we go. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um um, you want a reading about jerk energy, Sarah. So your name is Sarah, or who is this? S. Elizabeth 360. Is your name Sarah? Make sure that you're following me if you want a reading. Yeah, make sure you follow me, darling. I'll get you oven baked foreskin. Just give me a minute. We'll see if Sarah answers. <laughs> Erica, you're so funny. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so, okay, oven baked foreskin. Let me go ahead and do you because you're, you're getting upset. Um, what is your first name and what do you want spirit to show you today? Quickly answer. Hi, true to you. So good to see you. I was thinking about you last night. Jeremy? Wow. Yes? I've been big poor skin as Hannah. 
Oh, well, I do a reading for you. I didn't want you to be mad at me, so I came in here and told you. Do you want me to do you? No. No, it's fine. Are you I'm sure? I'm just messing with you. You're a <laughs> jerk. That was my daughter. I didn't know. I wasn't... I knew that name was familiar. I was like, I know I've read for this person before. That name is so familiar. You jerks. When you, you have to be quick with this free one because I did something to your car. Oh, you did? What'd you do? I don't know. You're okay, I'll go see. I'll go see. All right. Ah, <laughs> that was my daughter. I was wondering why they were being a jerk. I was like, oh, they're being a jerk. <laughs> So who was the first one I was talking to anyway? So that was, do, 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 do. So, S. Elizabeth was the one I was tra talking to before. I would love a reading about jerk energy, Sarah. Yes, I would love to know where I am spiritually, Sarah. All right. So, Sarah, let's do a, um, a meditation. And take what my daughter did that was kind of jerky as a communication from God that um make light of jerks um that it's maybe not as bad as you think or something like that so sarah let's do a um <laughs> everybody's talking um let's do a a communication here or like a let's do a meditation all right, here we go. Imagine with me, Sarah. You and me together. Okay. Um, Sarah. You are riding on a white horse, naked. You um, are like wanting to step into your goddess energy. You're not exactly sure how to use your mind and your power yet. You want to be authentic. You want to be powerful. You want to be natural. You want that female energy. You want that freedom. Um, and, and you're not exactly sure how to guide your horse. Um, so what I'd like for you to do is I'm going to put a blanket over you and you're going to just talk to me. I'm going to take you off your horse and suddenly you turn into about, um, 10 years old and I'm 10 years old and I'm like, Hey, I love your horse. And you're like, hi. And you're wearing clothes now. I'm wearing clothes. And we go sit on a park bench together. I'm admiring your big, beautiful horse. And I tell you how beautiful your horse is. And an ice cream truck comes. And we go get some ice cream. And we sit on the bench together, giggling and laughing and eating ice cream together. And um, and you're worried. You're like, I say, what are you worried about? You're like, I'm worried that um, my horse will get into trouble and do the wrong thing. And I say, yes, uh, yes, your horse could go into the swamp of sadness. Your horse could do the wrong thing, but you can guide your horse and, um, and we can teach your horse through this guidance. And we talk about not worrying about your horse and not worrying about yourself, connecting spirit with flesh. So um, I give you hope. I give you inspiration. I give you this wonderful ice cream made out of honey, organic food. You feel really good. Your horse is fine. You're fine. And let's go forward. Because 
The crystallization of spirit within the flesh is a difficult thing. Um, when we allow our dog, which is our mind, to go into the garden of the reptilian wicked witch, it messes up our ethereal net and our Taurus field. And our Taurus field is connected to the World Wide Web. And if our ethereal net gets stuck in to the web, then we, um, our consciousness gets swept away like in a house. Our Taurus field is connected to the tornado. So Dorothy's Taurus field was swept away by the tornado because she allowed her mind to go into the garden of the Wicked Witch of the West. And, uh, and it's a very difficult thing. The, the main truth of how to balance spirit and flesh and not manifest jerks in your life, like a reptilian Wicked Witch, is to seek first the kingdom of God. Leave behind the matrix and the people of drama and dead. If people are manifesting in your lives that are in your life that is a jerk, they are a mirror of who you used to be. So if you engage with them, then you are still like them. If you forgive them and cut them out of your memory, then good job. You have cut that out of your life, a mirror of you that no longer serves your spirit. So let's look at your piece and let's look and see what spirit has to say about this. So. I saw this as a man here. You're going through the invisibility. You're becoming invisible. You may be having a hard time with this concept. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a face, but you are invisible. You are turning invisible. You're holding a heart. And you're wearing a coat of protection. And you are stabbing somebody um you are riding on a horse naked. Um, to me, it looks like you are just stepping into um, your power. Uh, you're becoming invisible. You're leaving behind an old world. You are actually cutting off energies that no longer serve you. There's bread. You're, give us today our daily bread. What kind of bread? What daily bread? Your daily bread is changing. These are loaves of bread, slices of bread, and the bread is, is being cut. You're, there's a tree being cut, and there's a star that came out of, of there. So you are, um, um, you are taking away all that do, no longer serves you, following spirit and the hoof of this horse is huge. 
and this is making the ground tremble. You're shaking things up. Um, to change the world. I don't know what it, how to say that. Remember watching Donnie Darko and what's her name on Donnie Darko? What is her name? Her name is, uh, she was the little girl on E.T. Well, anyway, she says to Donnie Darko, why did the people set the mattress that was filled with money on fire? And Donnie Darko says, to change the world. No other reason than to do something that was completely unexpected. So it looks like you're shaking things up to change your world. Don't think that everything in the world is someone else. It's usually um, our own, usually something that we did, but... Um, so here is bread being changed. And I think that this bothers people. There are people connected to you that know that you're changing and shifting and, and they're causing trouble because they want you to stay. Even if it doesn't seem that way, it is that way. There's a unicorn here. There's a, nut, there's a female here. It's like somebody dancing. You're, you're ascending. Yeah, you're ascending. This ascension is, is, you're like a ballerina twirling and you're ascending. The ballerina twirling is, some, is the ascension. And you're leaving behind a lot. Uh, and, and that's just the name of the game. That's just what we do is. And so this individual up here, their hands make bread. And so this bread is being sliced and falling down. And this bread is, your daily bread is changing. Who you are is changing. The people in your life are either a mirror of who you used to be or, uh, see, there's this tree man. We have died of the old world. We've died of the age of Pisces. And our heart is taking us to and shaking the world up. And sometimes your double will cause chaos in your life to shake your world up, to wake you up so that you don't go back to your daily bread. So your double is like connected to an animal. It's a white horse. Your spirit guide is currently this horse with these big hooves shaking the earth. And the age of Pisces, dead. No more leaves on the tree. No more. And the spinning ballerina, stabbing um, that which no longer served us and going to our destiny. The problem is... Um, 
when these energies manifest in our lives, they are simply a communication from God and your double. So, for instance, there were individuals who came into my life who resonated with low self-worth. Mommy issues, daddy issues. And they constantly were psychically connecting to me every day. So much that they started speaking through my husband and getting in my head and constantly, like constant. And the reason they kept doing this to me was because they have mommy issues, daddy issues. I was their new mommy. And this was low self-worth becoming turning into a psychic attack. And this psychic attack turned made their energy come into my energy space so much that I, I could barely do readings. I could barely live my normal life because they were constantly in my face, right? So if you have someone who manifests in your life as something that is aggravating to you or is shaking things up, this is spirit reminding you that you have a choice. You can cut out low self-worth forever by leaving a mirror of yourself behind. And don't look back. Don't feel sorry because when we let go of people that no longer serve spirit, spirit will let us know. It's not that we're leaving them behind. It's because we're following a divine order and certain energies um, are only there to help us to leave a part of ourselves that we were behind. Forgiveness is not kind. It's cutting off people or um, relationships that just don't seem to work. And it's because we keep on a hamster wheel of this paradigm, a daily bread that no longer serves us. Um, so what we have to do is um, we have to cut them out of our lives, burn their memory. If spirit brings them back and, and you row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 then, then you're fine. But if it's not merrily or gently, then, then that has to be cut out, plucked out, so that it never returns again. Many of us have healed wounds, and there will be people who will come back into our lives to reopen that cut. And we will believe, oh, I must have not healed my mommy-daddy issues. I must have not, I must have, um, not healed my self-importance or my low self-worth. And it sounds ruthless, but the only way to heal it is to not engage. Don't fight. Don't let them know how you feel. Don't let them know what you think. You are moving to a new paradigm. You have left the age of Pisces. Your daily bread has shifted. That, that old you is dead. You are now born again. You are a new self. Give yourself a new name. You're going to a new world. You're eating new food. And your double will be a jerk to you and will manifest as jerks to you until you heal it completely because we cannot enter the age of Aquarius, which is part of a kingdom of heaven, if we cross-contaminate other people. What does that mean? If in this new world, I go to the fifth dimensional with low self-worth. When I become your friend and you think about me, you will feel low self-worth because we are the same. Thereby, I become a corruption to that place. When Harry Potter looked into the mirror and saw the pain of his mother and father, which was abandonment, he had low self-worth. Dumbledore said, Harry, stop looking in the mirror Stop seeing yourself as being abandoned and low self-worth. So who came along to push Harry out of low self-worth? Draco. Draco is a star system 
known as the, the Draco star system. It is connected to the dragon. And the dragon will try to kill you. It will hurt you. So a Slytherin is somebody connect, very connected to our dragon or our horse or our spirit guide. They will try to kill you. They will push you and hurt you until you stop thinking about low self-worth or self-importance. So here comes Draco Malfoy. Lose your mother and father, did you, Harry? Afraid of Dementors, are you, Harry? Just constantly pushed him to look at himself. Pushed him in harsh ways. Look at yourself. Don't have low self-worth. Don't have self-importance. Be in the middle. Be authentic. Step into your godly your godliness. Step into that goddess energy. And, and then if you do, no one will begin manifesting as jerks. Your daily bread will shift from death to life. And everyone who comes into your life will love you. Because... They will feel you and they won't feel low self-worth. They will feel you and they won't feel self-importance. All they'll feel is good vibes. And then suddenly, if God is for you, who can be against you? No one. And no one will manifest as a jerk. But it does take ruthlessness. That's you stabbing. And stabbing is forgiveness is not kind. It's saying, look, I'm going to show you through my behavior that it's not okay to be a mental parasite. You cannot think of me 24-7, worship me, and have low self-worth, and psychically be connected to my energy. When our ethereal net connects with the World Wide Web or the Wicked Witch of the West or anyone who has jerk energy, it pulls our boat down. And we can't move. And the best way to teach somebody to stop this endless cycle of low self-worth or self-importance is to show them how to cut people off and to not go back. Tradition of family, don't worry about that. Your true family are those who follow zero-point energy and God and life and power life energy only. Those who are polarized by low self-worth or self-importance and drama and chaos and drug addiction or alcohol or anything like that, we have to cut them off in a ruthless way because as the mommy, we have to show them that it's not okay to be a, a, a drainage to the collective. We do not want to cross-contaminate. We want to be only a vessel of truth and life and joy and anything else would not only harm ourselves, but harm each other. So you're going to have to be ruthless, but do it in divine timing. Because out of the tree of death came this star here of life. And now we're following this beautiful star. And this beautiful star is giving us a new, a, a new perspective. New relationships knew everything and you're you need to dance your dance and speak your truth and really begin stepping into your joy and get out of the cloud of confusion and misery many people who are jerks they have clouds and and they give you a cloud over your head and then suddenly we're just confused um, but you're becoming invisible, and I know that, that becoming invisible is very difficult. I'm with you. I feel invisible too. And we, we cry about it sometimes. But it's, it's really important that you don't um, allow yourself to be pulled by the old age of Pisces and go to this place of self-pity that we step into our power and we say no i am joy i am nothing and yet i am everything god is within me and i am obe obedient to this god energy my heart is and this shaking of the earth is shaking away all that is false boom go away 
boom, shaking that. And then suddenly you'll be in a new world if you persist in all efforts. And your new world will be like um, a bunch of people who love you and see you and, and can feel you and can tell that you're not a cross-contamination. <laughs> How we handle this crystallization of spirit within our flesh, the white horse within the flesh, how we behave is going to change. Our mind cannot go into the garden of the wicked witch. We cannot think on politics, controversial subjects, um, dramas within the family or relationships. That's the old self. The new self seeks first the kingdom of God. We think about uh, dodecahedrons or the platonic solids or we get into alchemy we get into something that makes us passionate and happy and we share it with the world with joy that's it we are empty vessels and holy vessels for god that's all we're here for and the manifestation of spirit within the flesh is going to be amazing but your horse is causing trouble for a reason Shaking things up, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's important to shake things up. Shaking the sugar tree. Getting good things off the tree, but shaking all the bad things, right? And this shaking is good because it brought the star out. And it, it makes things go. But it's just part of the process. This two hearts that you have is your twin flame. And this two hearts is two hearts that beat as one. Is you becoming half flesh, half spirit. And obeying your heart only, not your head. That's why your head was gone. And all you had was your heart. But we do need to dominate our heart with a little bit of logic. So don't diminish yourself completely. <laughs> Allow your logic to be there and your, your common sense and your logic to be there, to be as one with your heart. Oh, you're reading about that. Yeah, so twin. You have a twin heart here and then your hair makes one one. That's the Twin Towers here. So there's something about you going to that. Um, there's some communication for you about that. And then you have the number 33 here. That's um, when the Kundalini of the Earth... So the ancient prophets, the Navajo and the Hopi, say that when man steals so much resources and energy and soul of the earth, the kundalini of the earth, like a snake, will awaken and it will cause the earth to shake. And the kundalini is the 33 vertebrae of your spine and the 33 here. The daily bread that we once knew is changing the shaking of the earth is happening. The ascension is happening. Our most important thing is, is to stay centered at this time because these changes will happen like a thief in the night. And we need to be ready for it. Yes, the Hopi. Mm -hmm. This is a Hopi prophecy, what we're seeing right here. And the Hopi prophecy, and you can see your entire piece makes a giant heart this is about love the love of the earth and the love of animals and the love of god but think not that spirit is kind spirit is going to shake the earth and the earth is shaking the kundalini of the snake is rising up the earth with that 33 number our daily bread is changing and you're on that horse and all you have to do is don't be distracted by jerks. Allow the transcendence, be ruthless, cut it off, leave behind the age of Pisces, 
follow the sun, the star, step into your goddess energy and know that that twin heart thing is part of the program. Yeah. You're so welcome. Yes, do the work. Don't be distracted. Just know that every distraction is a mirror of something that we haven't healed. And this is what I'm learning. And so we have to say, okay, I'm still polarized by low self-worth or self-importance. May I every day when I wake up and every night before I go to sleep say, I am nothing and yet everything. I forgive you. And I release you. We are nothing. And yet we are everything together. We don't have to love or hate. We're just nothing. And yet everything together. It is love. But. Every morning and every night. Do a forgiveness. Some sort of forgiveness. Ritual or ceremony. And say, I love you so much. I release you. You were a mirror of a pain that I have not healed. And I want to heal you now. I want you to know that I'm so sorry. That I felt the way my mother did or my father or my friend. I'm so sorry I adopted someone else's energy or program. And I'm ready to release it now. I don't want to play these games. I don't want to fight. I don't care what anyone thinks about me because I'm no longer me. I am half flesh, half spirit. And I'm going to obey what spirit is showing me because I want to go to eternal life and I want to grow my spirit. And I don't want to look back anymore. So I love you so much and I let you go. I do not hold you and I... And I do not see the worst in you. I see the best. And I do not hold my consciousness or my thoughts or my feelings to you anymore. I release you. I release myself. And I thank you for what you had to teach me. And if you have to say it every day until one day it no longer polarizes you, then do that. And then you will be free. And then you will, you will, your horse will stop shaking the ground <laughs> and these will turn into wings and you will fly what yeah i judge people and i judge myself and that voice has to stop we have to stop judging others and judging ourselves it's ourselves but don't think that Love your neighbor as yourself is the rule. Remember what Jesus said. If you don't hate your brother, your mother, your sister, even your own life, you can't make it to heaven. Oh, really? Yes. Any tree that bears no fruit should be cut down and thrown into the fire. Does this tree have any fruit on it? No. So cut them out of your memory and burn them in the fire. Let the dead bury the dead. That was ruthless. Lord. I thought you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you are in the lower realm, your neighbor is a jerk because you're a jerk because you're in the lower realm. But if you ascend to heaven, then your neighbor is the energy of God and so are you. And so the, the, the rule is get out of the world of the dead, ascend, and then everyone will be God because you will be a piece of God and they will reflect that and so if god is for you who can be against you so you have ascended past the world of the dead no one should be against you at this point the only one who can be against us is if we're holding on to old judgments or old paradigms once we let that go we stop judging ourselves and that narcissistic mother or father diminishes out of our head and we start hearing other words like i love you so much you are so amazing it's okay to make mistakes you are so worth being alive. Just your smile is worth it. I love your energy. 
I love who you are just because you walked into the room. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be a, a talented person. Just your amazing energy is enough. And I'm so proud of you just for having a smile on your face. And then that's it. And then you're like, oh, that was easy. Mm hmm. Yeah, I do it too. I do it too. And you and every person I read for is a mirror of me. So I just read for you. I have this within me too. It's time we heal it and let it go. And uh, stop judging ourselves. I keep doing it too, though. I don't like getting older. It's like, oh, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, and I shouldn't do that. I should say, you know what? You've grown so much. I am so proud of you. You are so amazing. You've worked so hard. You've come a long way and blah, blah. Or just say, I'm nothing and everything. Yay. Whatever. But I'm right there with you. Let's make a decision today that we stop this judgment and we start listening to our hearts and we just live in joy and we just let our smile be our clothing and our makeup and our hairdo and let our energy and our smile glow so bright that it makes everybody else smile and they love you. Not because of anything but our energy. I think that's what your horse wants you to, te <laughs> to teach you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a big reminder, yes. <laughs> All right, well, I love you. I better go because my children want my attention and they want me to go look at something that I did for them or that they did to my car today. So as you guys transcend and awaken and in this spinning of the ballerina, just know that we're all in this together. I'm a mirror of you. You're a mirror of me. I'm a jerk. You're a jerk. I am nothing. You're nothing. And yet we are everything together. And I do love you so much. I hope you love me back. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central. Don't forget to follow me on my YouTube channel. If you missed any portion of this live, you can go to Mary Moses Art and follow me. If you want a reading, there is a wait time. You go to forestfairy.com. And also, what else did I want to say? Um, did I say I have a wait time? Yes, I have a wait time. Um, but yeah, uh, get into sacred geometry and think on in terms of frequency, life energy. Drink water, eat living foods. Don't forget to sun gaze and know that you're not alone. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.